In this episode, I go about addressing the parking brake cables on the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end in Project Low Fairmont a totally different way than how I thought I was going to do it. Welcome to Straight Six Fan. My name is Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod and your confidence without a ton of money. And today's episode, it's time we install the Lincoln Mark 7 parking brake cables on the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end I've installed on Project Low Fairmont, the $4,000 project budget car 1978 Ford Fairmont Futura. So before we can do this though, we've got to get that rear tank out because we don't want to be welding as well as having gas fumes around us. So let's get to it. If you caught last episode, you already know I have previously pulled the filler neck from the tank, and so it's just a matter of loosening the straps and lowering the tank. If you want a full how-to on how to drop a tank out of your Fox Buddy, go check out the video I'm linking in the info card above. For those of you who may be new to the channel, of course, the reason why I'm doing this in the first place is the car came with, of course, a standard 7.5 rear end, inch rear end, drum brake setup. And the Lincoln Mark 7 rear end is a disc brake car. So the thing to know about the car too, my objective with this build has always been to be what I call making it like a, a sleeper sleeper because it isn't going to be fast enough to be a true sleeper but um, I want everything to look as factory as possible as I'm doing this and so I didn't want to leave um, even though it's an automatic and I don't really need a parking brake I didn't want to make it look like things were left undone and so as a result the parking brake brackets between the two the Ford Fairmont drum brake setup and the Lincoln Mark 7 much newer car it's a 91 rear end um, the length of the cable is too long, so I have to move back the brackets on the car roughly an inch. We're going to get to measuring that here in a second, just to be sure. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of the why behind we're, why we're doing what we're doing today. So here's where we're at. I've got the cable in place on the axle. I've got enough length for it to uh, run along the control arm and into the stock bracket. So actually. From that perspective, don't know that I need to move this bracket up any. Um, there is, you know, I probably got some to give if I need to, but the real problem comes in trying to connect the cable to the stock bracket here. So you can see this is where I'm about an inch short. Um, now, there is an adjuster up that way um, in the middle of the car and so I might see if I can get some more slack out of it but I don't know that I'll have enough to get here so I'm kind of torn right now um, yeah if I don't have to do the move the bracket probably better but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do a little bit of both because if I move this too far I'll run out of cable back here and this I cannot control but uh, so we'll start kind of dorking around with the uh, adjustable bracket up front and see what kind of slack we can pull out of it. All right, I was able to get the passenger side hooked up, almost nearly maxing out the bracket. Uh, so we did have enough cable length. So now I gotta do is tighten back up that bracket to cinch this back up uh, as it's a little loose, but uh, yeah, so passenger side addressed without moving the bracket. Now for the driver's side, will it be the same? I don't know. So wouldn't you know, with the tensioner kind of maxed out, this is just how close we came to pulling it off without modifying anything. Of course, isn't that always how a project car goes? So I think what I've decided is the one thing I will modify now is just this little, you know, this is where the two uh, cables kind of come in uh, the little I don't know what you call this uh, collector I don't know but anyway 
Um, so I'm gonna splice it, probably stretch it by like an inch and we should be good. To maintain as much of the original integrity of the piece, uh, we'll be using the Dremel to make the smallest cut we possibly can. I did want to say thank you and welcome to a new wave of subscribers I just picked up. So um, a couple things for those of you who are new, uh, cuts kind of some mainstays in the garage is this ironing board inspired welding table. I'll leave an info card up over here if you're interested and in see what that's about. As well as the Everlast, what is it? The Ultra Power 26, no, 206 PI, something like that. Uh, Multi-process machine, it's a three-in-one uh, arc welder, plasma cutter, TIG welder. So we'll be using that to TIG weld uh, the little bracket. I had some leftover stock from my giveaways, if you may remember those. So we have uh, sectioned the bracket and put it back together. Just tack welded in place right now. Um, so I'll show you the good side. <laughs> but uh, I, I went and put it under the car to see, you know, how much clearance is around it. And I've got plenty of room to now where I can kind of like reinforce the sides. Um, you know, like so. and kind of double up on the material. So, I don't know, we'll see if I if I really care to do that. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, he's kind of contradicting himself because this isn't gonna look factory. All right, fine, so be it. <laughs> uh, last time I was in O'Reilly's and I was trying to find just a bracket like this in a longer iteration. Uh, they were of no help, and then of course, with all the stay at home stuff, they don't want you in the stores more than you have to be. So, um, this is the solution for today. I'm happy with it, it's gonna work for me, but I gotta finish welding it up. Here we are with the finished product. Is it overkill? Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> But, you know, like I said, uh, it was an excuse to practice TIG welding. And so, you know, the focus of my channel is to help you build your hot rod in your confidence without a ton of money. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Look, I need to practice TIG welding. And someday I want to be able to show those welds off. You know, maybe that's uh, like a cantilever airbag suspension on a rat rod or something. But I just don't have those skills. So this is the type of thing while yes, you probably could have someone somewhere somehow could have found a longer one of these. Um, yes, I didn't have the time to really hunt that down um, here again today. But nobody's going to see this underneath the car until, you know, a mechanic's servicing it on down the road up on a lift. And so why not? Why not practice my TIG welding now on a spot that no one's going to see so that I can get better at it? on down the road. Anyway, I'm gonna go throw this on the car and um, when we come back, I owe you a budget update. It never fails, right? You always drag out way more tools than you could ever imagine for a simple project. But guys, if you liked kind of that message I just delivered about you know, helping you build your hot rod and your confidence, think about maybe purchasing uh, a t-shirt like this 3060s 198 Slant 6 inspired t-shirt or my flagship Straight 6 fan. Pistons T. Link down in the description below to my Spreadshirt store to pick you up one of those. By supporting a channel like that, that helps me make sure we can do projects like this in the long run. But finally, this list that I made way, way back when, <laughs> probably, I don't know, probably August the last year, we're done. I can finally, the parking brakes are, well, okay, so they're not 100% done. Um, the Clips that came with the drum brake parking brake assembly from the stock Fairmont setup compared to the receiving clip on the Mark 7 cables, it looks like I should probably go out and search for a little different clip styles. But aside from that, that's the only thing left uh, on the parking brake setup. And then I do need some zip ties to zip tie the uh, cables to rear control arms. But like I said, this list, has existed way too long. In fact, when I was looking up, when I bought the parking brake cables, it was October 27th. So with that, let's give you guys 
a budget update because the last time we left off, we were at five. As it would turn out in editing, I found I had actually bad information when I was doing the budget update on Sunday's episode. So here we are on Tuesday. So let's get into it. Last time we checked in, the bu budget, what well, remained of the original $4,000 project budget, including the purchase of the car, was $513.13. So with the assistance of some cashback bonuses on my credit card, I got the parking brake cables for $5.70. That brings us down to $507.43 remaining of that total project budget. Now let's get back to the Sunday footage. Only other thing I'll say is, okay, so maybe it didn't make sense now that you've made it all the way to the end of the video, why I dropped the fuel tank. And well, okay, so like back, I spent time underneath that car and I came to the conclusion I was going to have to move those brackets, but I found a different way today, so it kind of stinks. I did more work than I needed to, but it did afford me more room underneath there when I was uh, trying to hook up the parking brake cable, so not like it was all for naught, but more work to put the car back together. Um, right now, the important thing is I got to get this garage cleaned up so I can get my wife's car back in, go clean myself up, enjoy the rest of my Sunday night. Thanks for tuning in. That's going to do it for this episode. Oh, wait a second. Why don't you go watch another video? But until next time, peace out.